Tim Hensley here with the Urban Homestead. Our website is www.oldvaapples.com. We're here in our side yard today, which doubles as a part of our nursery. Uh, we propagate young plants here in this area and can keep them watered easily. And we have some uh, we have some pawpaws growing here, and also some uh, some currants. And then I'm going to talk also about some figs that we have growing in the backyard here. If you're looking to add some edible plants to your landscape, uh, these are three that we are partial to, and uh, the pawpaw, the currant, and the uh, and the fig. And uh, you hear the traffic in the background. That's our urban setting. But uh, the pawpaw is the uh, it's the largest plant native to North America, and we have three trees growing here in our side yard. And uh, this uh, first tree is the overlease uh, cultivar. And um, it has set on some very large clusters of, uh, here we are at the first of, uh, we're at the first of July, first week of July, and you can see really large clusters of fruit over here just past the fence. There's one cluster, looks like it has about, oh, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight or nine uh, pawpaws in one cluster. And these will get to be uh, quite large. Uh, the fruits, uh, we weighed one last uh, last uh, summer, and I believe it was a 10 ounce uh, fruit. So these are gonna be really, uh, make a really fine uh, large fruit. And uh, this cultivar is used as breeding stock for some of the newer uh, cultivars. Highly productive treats. It makes a pretty, uh, pretty tree in the landscape. Uh, we come now to our, our next tree, which is a, uh, this is a seedling, a Zimmerman seedling. And you can see there's a difference in the fruit quality. This is a smaller, a smaller fruit and it ripens uh, later in the season. It has a sort of a bronze, uh, this, this fruit has a bronze uh, flesh and it has maybe a caramel, a caramel like flavor. And so uh, the, the seedlings are kind of like apples. They vary, uh, they vary from the parent. And then um, over here is our, our third tree. This is the uh, mango cultivar. And back in this early season, I, uh, I did a video because this thing was loaded with, uh, it was loaded with bloom. Uh, but we had a storm come through. And I think what happened was the bulk of those blooms got uh, knocked off. Uh, the, just the, the wind uh, broke those little, those tender fruitlets off. And so this tree is actually has the fewest fruit. It seems that the later, only the latest uh, blooms uh, actually set fruit. And uh, I say, uh, if you're looking to add one of these plants to your, uh, to your own home garden, we have a number of uh, plants here in one gallon containers. And uh, we also have a few two gallon uh, pawpaws and these are real pretty real pretty plants coming on here very nicely in fact we need to bump these up into a two gallon pot uh, these one gallon plants uh, are twelve dollars and these grafted pawpaws uh, from the mango and the overlease are forty five dollars now the second plant I'd like to uh, like to uh, talk to you about is the uh, it is the red lake current and uh, here just in the midst of these uh, pawpaws is a red lake currant. Here is a plant that uh, will grow in just about any situation in your home uh, landscape. Gets to be about three or four feet tall. It can be a bit ungainly if you don't prune it. So we've, even here with other plants, these pawpaws, potted pawpaws around this, it's, it, uh, we've had to prune this thing just to hold it back. Uh, but here's a plant that uh, it'll, it'll fruit in part shade. It gets only about three or four feet tall, so you can grow it almost anywhere. And it'll be loaded in the early spring with some uh, bright red fruits, little round fruits, and uh, very attractive on the uh, plant. And uh, you can use these to make, uh, you can put them in a pie. This year we had a mixed pie, uh, mixed fruit pie from just what was uh, what was uh, ripening around here. And so we had some currants in our pie, and we thought it'd be pretty pretty wangy but it was actually very tasty and then um, you can also um, make a jelly out of this uh, current uh, maybe two or three years ago two years running we had uh, uh, batches of jelly from these plants just four plants here and made the quarts and quarts of this uh, of this uh, red current jelly and it's uh, kind of like uh, 
it's kind of like cranberry sauce only it's a sweeter a sweeter thing the french uh, highly regard this uh this red currant jelly and you know the french palate is uh oh it's uh it's uh quite discriminating so uh, when you've got uh, currant jelly you're supposed to have a really fine uh, some fine stuff now we're going to make our way back to a couple of figs and uh, we're going to be going by the dog lot so we may have a cacophony erupt here but uh, we have a number of edible things here in our landscape here's a temporary garden beds and we have some espalier trees here we'll just give you the quick tour here's an espalier pear and uh, here's an espaliered apple up against the fence. This is a Myers Royal limber twig. And here's an old English cider apple. Uh, but we come now, come back to our, uh, come back to this. Uh, come back to this uh, fig. And uh, we have the uh, Hardy Chicago. And this name's slipping me now. What is it, uh, Aiden? Mm -hmm. This is the Brunswick fig. That's it. When you press to, to give a talk, you'll forget the name. But this is the Brunswick fig, and it's distinctive for its deeply cut leaf. It's very attractive here in the landscape. And uh, here we have it. Here's a dog lot. Here's a chicken lot. And we have pruned this thing to shape it up here. And uh, the Brunswick fig, it'll set on a few early figs. Here's a really large... Uh, fig coming on here's another one in here this one these will ripen pretty soon and you can see all over this bush now uh, we have new figs coming on and uh, oh this is a really an exquisitely flavored fig a high flavored fig unfortunately our season is often sh so short or not we're in the south so it's not a super short season but we're not deep south so the frost will sometimes, will often actually hit this uh, fig before these things ripen. But we're hoping this year uh, that we've got uh, a good early start and these things are going to come on. Uh, this tree is about eight feet tall right now and it's got about the same spread so you can manage, uh, you can manage a fig there and it's pruned up nicely and made a pretty nice form. And so uh, we have some little one gallon starts of this Brunswick fig. and and they uh, they're not going to be ready till this fall so you'll need to wait uh, if you're looking to plant a brunswick you'll need to come see us in the fall but uh, now we're going to make our way over to a uh, to the hardy chicago fig and uh, this fig uh, can be grown uh, in the far north um, one of the benefits of it one of the benefits of this hardy Chicago is that it will fruit on new wood. And so uh, even if it gets frozen to the ground, the hardy Chicago will give you some fresh, some fresh fig. And here you see we have a monster, a monster plant going up to the eave of our house. And uh, here's, a, here's a new little fruitlet coming on. Oh, this is going to be, it's, it's borderline ready. And uh, here's the hardy Chicago. It's not as uh, it's not as large as the uh, Brunswick fig, but uh, oh my, fresh fig. There's just nothing like it. It's really, really some fine eating. Um, and we have a bunch of these uh, hardy Chicagos rooted, and in fact we have some nice two-gallon plants that are borderline three-gallon up about so tall. And I believe we have those at 22 or 20, 25 dollars. And uh, again, you can see this thing gets quite large. We'll actually prune this thing down just because he's filling up this uh, part of our backyard. But uh, we wanted to give just a, a quick talk here on uh, three edibles that we're offering that uh, I think they fit into uh, they fit into about any home landscape. That uh, pawpaw is. Uh, attracts a zebra swallowtail so it's a fine uh, a fine uh, plant uh, for other uh, for ornamental purposes it, it has a uh, tropical look about it as well the uh, current could be planted uh, uh, in a in an ornamental bed and it wouldn't look uh, look out of place I think one caveat with this fig they can the plant itself can have a sort of a musky 
a musky smell, uh, not unlike a cat spray. Now, I do not detect any of that here this morning, but occasionally, I guess it's when it really, oh, there it is, faintly. But I guess when the sun really comes in here, you'll wonder if a cat has visited. So you don't want to plant this where you're going to be having open windows and breezes coming into your house. You want to put it in some place uh, where you don't have to, you only get that fragrance when you go out to collect the fruit. It's not overpowering, but it can be fairly strong so that when visitors come to your house, they might be wondering what's going on. But anyway, three, uh, three fine, uh, three fine edible plants to add to your home landscape. Tim Hensley, Urban Homestead. Our website is www.oldvaapples.com.